Hi guys, so in this course we're going to be creating a food plan generator that will help you randomly select the meals that you're going to eat every day for a month so it just saves you thinking about it and it's one last job for you to do and when you refresh the page it will just randomly re-randomly select the meals for you until you find a combination that you like Over here in the breakfast, lunch and dinner tabs this is where we'll put the data or the meals that you want to eat and then it'll all work it out and put it together in this overview tab and I'll show you how to do that so that you can create something like this for yourself because it only takes about 30 minutes to do so once you follow the steps that I'll teach you in this course Hi guys, so in this lesson I'm going to be showing you some of the basics to use Excel Now over here you've got a worksheet and to add another one you would click the plus icon To delete this you would right click and click delete Now to rename I would double click on it and type in what I want to call it, which is going to be January to June. Now each of these little boxes, they're called cells, and you can work out the cell reference by looking at the column letter and the row number, which are both highlighted. So this would be I10, and it's displayed in this top left hand corner over here. Now I can type in text, so that's meant to say hello, or numbers, or both text and numbers. I can highlight all the cells in the spreadsheet by pressing Ctrl and A or by clicking this button over here and I can make changes to the font size the font style I can make it in bold italics or underlined I can also press Ctrl B for bold I for italics or U for underlined and I can have all three on at once if I want over here I can create a colour for the background of the cell which is yellow, I can choose any other colour from here but notice that white is different to the no fill option and that's because it gets rid of those lines on the outside so I'm going to change this back to no fill so it looks like a normal cell I can style the colour of this one to a light blue or any of these other colours I'm just going to delete all these by pressing delete but if I made a mistake I can press Control Z for undo or Control Y for redo and it's the same with these arrows undo redo I'm going to show you how to copy text so if I press Control and C I can then paste this over here and it will remain in the same place as it was before I can use right click copy and right click and paste if I wanted to move this from this cell to another cell I would press Control X or right click and cut and then I would paste it over here and it removes it from its old location I can resize the shape of the cells and the rows if I was to insert a new row by right clicking and insert it would copy the properties of the row above it Whereas if I did one down here, it would just be normal. But because this one was adjusted, the following one is also adjusted. If I was to colour this in yellow and I added it would insert a column, this would also be yellow. Now I'm just going to delete all of this. A quick way to get rid of any of all of this is to just select it all right click and delete now over here is the function bar and this displays exactly what you're typing out in your cell but it's just a bit bigger and sometimes easier to work with so to type out a function you use the equals button but first we need some numbers so we're going to use five and six so if i was to type out equals here i would use this cell reference add this cell number or cell reference equals 11 and that adds up those two numbers and if I change this number to 7 it automatically calculates it now to do a subtraction I would have to change this to the dash or minus sign and that would give me the answer of 1 now to multiply the two numbers I would use the star sign and for divide I would if I double click into it I double click into the cell I can also edit it and for dividing I would use the slash 
Now, if I wanted to mer merge two cells together, such as this and this, I would press this button here, merge, and it just makes the two cells into one, and it automatically puts the, the text in the center, and to unmerge it, I'd press the same button again. If I wanted to merge a large area like this, and start typing, when I hit enter, you can see that I can put the text in the middle, top, bottom, left, all right, just wherever I want it to go, really. I'm going to start by creating the breakfast tab by renaming the sheet to breakfast. And because there are 10 different things that I ate for my breakfast, I'm going to write down the numbers from 1 to 10. And a quick way of doing this is writing out a few numbers, such as 1, 2, 3, highlighting them all. And in the bottom right, if you click that button and drag it down, until the number bit next to it goes to the number you want so i want to get to number 10 so that's that number 10 and i'll let go it automatically fills out the rest of the numbers for me and so what i'm going to do now is enter the 10 items that i would eat for my breakfast and i've already got them written down so i'm just going to copy and paste them but for you you can just change them to be whatever you want it to be and i'm just going to click in between cell c and d to make the column width match the text size now to start creating the actual table, I'm going to shrink this cell down a little bit because I only need space for one number which you'll see in the next video. And I'm going to write out the first day of the week which is Monday. And then I'm just going to press tab to go to the next cell, Tuesday. And just like before, I'm going to highlight them and drag it till it gets to Sunday. Now I just need to copy this cell and make a gap in between each of the days. So if I click cell E, copy, go into G, insert copied cell, I just need to do that for all the days. But I've got to press copy in between after uh, every time I paste it. So insert copied, control C, right click, insert copied. Control C, right click, insert copied, control C, and so on and so on until they're all done. Now you can see uh, that for some of the cells like Wednesday and Saturday the text is crossing over. So what I'm going to do is highlight all these days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And what I'm going to do is by highlighting them all, I'm going to make them all bigger by the same amount. So all I would do is just click on any one of them and drag it and then they would all increase by that much and I'm going to make them all big enough so I can see them all on the same screen like this without them scroll left or right so with that done I'm going to highlight all the cells by clicking this button here and making them all size 12 and I want these to be in bold just so they stand out so what I'm going to do is press Control B for bold, as you can see over here. I'm going to make them in pink, which is this colour here. Or if you're starting from a new spreadsheet, you click more colours, and it's that colour there that you would press. I'm going to be size 14. Underneath here is where we have our wheat number. So I'm just going to highlight all these cells, merge them just so it looks neat and press week or type in week one rather and I want this to be in bold as well and size 13 which I'll just type in did I make these size 14 yes I did so this will be an orange color just so it's a bit different and what I'm going to do now is copy that or rather not I'm going to copy these ones and paste it for week two week three and week four and just double tap change that to week two this will be week three week four and now if I select the whole table I'm just going to create a nice little border by pressing this button here and selecting all borders so now I've got a nice table and I just need to input the data which I'll do in the next lesson when I talk about the formulas so we're going to be looking at using two formulas the random between and the lookup so to start off with the random between, any formula you do in Excel below start off with equals. So we'll put equals rand between 
and you can see it's popped up there so I'll just type in run between brackets and I'm going to choose a minimum number and a maximum number that I want it to the range I want it to be in so looking over here I've got from 1 to 10 so that's what I'll do I'll do 1 comma 10 close brackets and when I hit enter it gives me a random number if I press F9 that refreshes XO and as you can see it gives me a different number every single time now to do the VLOOKUP I want to know what meal number 5 is and as you can see it's a smoothie but I need that cell to work it out automatically for me so if I press equals VLOOKUP brackets now the number I that I want to look up is this number whatever that may be if I press comma you need to put a comma after every bit of information in Excel and as you can see here it's, it's asking me for the table so the table starts from this cell colon and it finishes in this cell so I'm looking up in this range and I want it to tell me what the second column is so it's going to look on this first column and I want it to tell me what it says in the second column so I'll press number two close the bracket and when I press it you can see it says avocado on toast which is correct and if I do it again gives me number three which is Weetabix and that's correct so what I'm going to do is just copy this into here now as you can see it's given me four fruit which is correct and when I look in there as you can see that the table has now moved down and that's because when I move my cell over here when I copy and paste that formula I moved it down two cells and so now it's moved it down two cells over here so to prevent that from happening what I need to do is go into this formula and put dollar signs around E and 4 and what that does is it locks it in and not the E and the 4 sorry I need to do the B2 to C11 basically where the table is and that does it locks in the table so no matter where I copy and paste my formula to it will always look in this table over here so if I hit enter and now if I copy and paste it you can see that the formula is still looking in this table which is exactly what I want and if I just copy and paste this down here down here and now I just need to copy it across into all the other weeks so I'm just going to do that really quickly just using control C control V I'm just using my arrows to move down and right although you could also use enter and tab to move down and right once I've finished with this I'm just going to make my columns a little bit bigger so that the writing is easier to read and it's not crossing over into the next spell cell so to do this I'm just going to highlight I only want the cell with the text in so I'm going to highlight all these cells and I'm just going to make them all bigger all at once by the same amount so if I just go like this should make them all bigger but that's not big enough so I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger realistically I could go all the way up to the edge of the screen as long as I can see everything on there so I'm just going to do that make it a bit bigger now there we are so now all the data, all the text is in the cell and I can see everything without having to scroll to the left or the right. To continue watching this tutorial for free, click on the link in the video description and that will take you to this page where you can carry on watching from where you left, which is video 5. And when you sign up using this link, you'll get two months of premium membership for free, which will give you access to thousands more classes so you can learn other skills as well as the skills that you learn in this course which is, will be how to create a random meal generator in Excel.